Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Super Micro CSE 825 chassis and specifically the motherboards inside the X10 SRL-F and the X10 SRI-F. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Super Micro X10 SRL-F and the X10 SRI-F. If you find anything useful in today's video, do us a favor, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. Uh, for starters, um, this, uh, this uh, system has only one CPU inside. Um, it's an LGA 2011-3 socket, which means you can use Intel Xeon E5 1600V3 or V4 series or Intel uh, E5 2600V3 or V4 series CPUs. Uh, people ask us all the time, hey, what do you recommend? Personally, it depends on the application that you're using it for. If you're using a low-end application, I'm a big fan of the uh, E5 2620V3. Uh, it's very inexpensive and it's um, you know a very reliable proc. Uh, if you're looking for a higher-end application, I'm a big fan of the E5 2680V4. Um, and if you want to go even a little bit higher, you can go E5 2690V4, but there's going to be a, a bigger jump in price, whereas the um, E5 2680V4 is my personal favorite as far as just like the bang per buck uh, that you're going to get. Um, so that's you know what I recommend. Okay. Uh, as far as RAM's concerned, it takes DDR4 memory. There are eight DIMM slots inside. Uh, you can use a number of different uh, uh, sizes in here. You can go as low as a uh, four gig, eight gig, uh, sixteen gig, thirty-two gig, uh, sixty-four gig, or all the way up to one hundred twenty-eight gig. But we'll get back to that because you can only use that with one type of RAM. Uh, as far as the speeds are concerned, it's pretty simple. You can use twenty. 133 or 2400. Technically, you can put in 2666, but I'll tell you in advance, it's just going to clock back down to 2400. So, you know, I let people know in case you have stuff laying around, you could put it in and it will work. Uh, but if you're ordering right now and you're trying to decide, hey, what would be the best thing for me to get, just go with the 2400 because it's just going to clock down anyways if you go any higher than that, okay? Uh, there's two types of RAM that you can use for this. There's ECC registered, which is also known as an RDIM, and there's load reduced, which is known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, you can max out at 512 gigabytes using 864 gigs at 2400 megahertz. Now with load reduced, this is where you get uh, double the uh, overall scalability and this is where you can use those 128 gigabytes we were just talking about a second ago and you can get one terabyte using eight 128 gigabytes at 2400 megahertz. Okay, now we know a little bit more about the uh, RAM and CPUs as far as the different compatibilities. Uh, let's go ahead and hop inside. We'll show you how to actually load and configure it, uh, teach you a little bit more about the memory channels themselves. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. Really, you never want to be inside without some uh, some sort of protection. So I'm going to grab that and I'll be right back. All right, we have our ESD gear on. So first things first, we're going to push these two tabs down, pull back. You'll see a little opening. Pop the top off and boom, you're in. Very simple. Pretty much like any uh, super micro system you've been in before. All right, as we discussed, there is only one CPU. The CPU controls all eight DIMM slots. Pretty simple, right? Um, one of the things that um, I always like to point out in advance is uh, the memory channels and how to install them. Uh, so in this case, there are four memory channels and there are two DIMMs per channel. Uh, the start of each channel is actually the blue DIMM slots, okay? So this uh, first one right here is A1. The second one right here is B1. Come over here, this is C1, and this is D1. This is important to note for a number of reasons. Let's just say you were only putting in four modules, okay? Four 16 gigs, four 32 gigs, doesn't really matter. But let's just say you're putting in four modules, okay? You want to put them into the four blue slots, okay? And the reason being is uh, you want to maximize your performance overall, okay? So you don't want to put four DIMMs over here and just completely overload two channels and then have the other two channels not working for you at all, right? You want to have all four channels evenly uh, distributed, all working equally hard for you, and you're going to get the best performance that way, okay? So I always like to show that to people just because that's the, the best way to configure it if uh, you only have four. Uh, and same deal if you only had two, for instance, you'd want to put it in A1 and B1. You still want to make sure you're maximizing it and putting it in two different channels, okay? So, um, Couple tips uh, before I get started. I always like to make sure all my channel or all my tabs are open. Okay, so go ahead and pop open all the tabs. Um, that way, when you're actually putting the module in, you can use two hands. You're not fumbling around with the tabs. They're not accidentally fighting. You're pushing back on the edge of the module. Okay. Uh, next tip that I like to point out. Okay, uh, right here. Uh, on the module itself, there is a notch in the middle. This is known as a key. This key is very important because this key is not perfectly in the center. It is off slightly a little bit, which means you have to make sure that you line this key up properly in the socket because uh, if you put it the wrong way, you could potentially 
uh, damage the leads itself or damage the dim slot. And if you damage the dim slot, that means it could throw the whole channel off, which means you might end up having to replace the motherboard. Not a problem you want to run into over simply installing the, the dims the wrong way. So just it's a very easy mistake to make, and it's a very easy thing to do. Uh, just make sure you line it up properly. So just look at it. In this case, we're going to put it into A1. So we're going to slide it in right here, make sure everything's lined up. And boom, hey, that's the proper way to do it, okay? Now, the next common error that I see quite a bit is uh, someone will put a module in, and they'll push down, and one of the tabs might go in, and the other tab doesn't, and um, they end up not uh, fully seating the module. So they'll call us, and they'll say, hey, you know, we got a failed module, or one of the modules is bad, and we'll say, hey, take your modules, rotate them around. And the reason we ask that is because when you start rotating them around, you'll end up just putting it properly in a different uh, slot, and so it's a real common issue. Um, I tell people all the time, I don't care if you've been doing it, you know, 20 years, you've been a technician, this is your, you know, first day in the data center, um, you, uh, you, you'll run into this issue, uh, you know, at some point in your career because uh, we all do it. I, I've done it on video, all right? It's just, it's an easy mistake to make. So another thing I like to point out, I already put the first one in, but I want to show you on this next one here. You want to hear these two clicks, right? This is how you know it's, it's fully seated. Click one click two. That's how you know it's fully seated. You can also look and you see how these two tabs on the first two that I installed are fully in. You see these two tabs out here? They're still sticking out. Um, if you had a tab, let's just say, I'll kind of just show you like right here. So let's say that tab, see how that's kind of sticking out? And let's say you have these other two. When you check at the end, if you see something like that, that means this module is not fully inserted over here. You can even just see I clicked it back in, which means the leads aren't reading and it's not going to show up and it's not going to register. So I know I'm stressing the point. Uh, of it, but it's an important point because uh, it's something that happens uh, pretty much every day over here. Someone uh, runs into that issue with us and calls us about it, um, and it's just simply seating the module. It's a, it's a simple mistake. So, all right. So, um, a lot of times, and I, I got myself in this situation right here as I was going. A lot of times, I actually like to work from the inside out because right there you can notice it was a kind of a tight squeeze. You got the heat sink, you got the modules all on you. Um, so sometimes it's actually easier uh, to start from the inside out, which I'm actually do on this next one, and it will flip as far as the key over here. So just another important note to so when you're installing it, the key does flip. Okay, so I'll start over here. Just because, again, um, less space. Sometimes you, you, when you work your way out, uh, there's a ton of space over here. So when I get to that last one, I'm not kind of jammed in. And again, it's just a lot of this is just simple tips. You don't have to follow them. You can do it the way you want. Um, but just simple things to do that uh, you know make your life easier, right? That's what it's all about. So, all right, now we got the last one, and we'll call it a day. So, and, and this is one of the things I always tell people, uh, if you're looking to extend the life of, of your server as a whole, I mean, honestly, upgrading the RAM is the easiest and least expensive way to boost the overall performance. Uh, it's what I always recommend, um, you know, CPU and RAM, but generally the CPU is so far ahead of everything else that you don't really need to worry yourself too much with the CPU. You probably need to upgrade your RAM. So, anyhow, um, now that we've in, uh, installed them all, we've got this. Uh, uh, you know, not quite maxed out, but in a great shape for overall performance. We'll just pop the top back on, and we'll call it a day. Now, um, if you've made it this far, hey, do us a favor, click that like, and uh, smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any upgrades for your Super Micro, X9, X10, X11, uh, X12, X8, really doesn't matter. Um, we, we offer a ton of different memory, all sizes and speeds. Uh, we'd love to have the opportunity to, to earn your business. So do us a favor and reach out to sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Uh, one of our ninjas would love to help you out and provide you a quote. Thanks for stopping by today. Have a great day, guys.